Well, I've just come out from doing a live stream video to Facebook and um, where it's been an opportunity to pray um, for um, everyone in real time. And as you know, that I do a daily coffee time talk. And this is our time to perhaps unwind a little bit and re relax and consider the scriptures. The first thing that my son Luke, who you can see behind me now, said to me this morning was, don't forget your Bible. And uh, that was such a good admonition because it's easy to forget that Jesus is the Word of God and He's given us the words of Scripture so that we can discern the will and the purpose of God in our lives. In this age where we feel and sense a lot of things. It's, a, it's an age where what I feel becomes more important and predominates over what is objectively true. It's the age of subjectivism. And of course, it didn't begin in the 1960s, but it came to fruition and a germination and a, uh, or should I say, germination first and then once it began to grow, it was almost unstoppable, this momentum into a sensual lifestyle and one where we are moved by images and by uh, emotions. And very often that actually takes precedence over what the Word of God has to say to us. And the Word of God is alive and active and sharper than two-edged sword. And I think we'll find that in today's uh, liturgy, in fact, the Gospel acclamation is from Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. And I love the way it's word, worded in this translation. The Word of God is something. <laughs> yeah, the Word of God really is something. But let's continue with the sentence. The Word of God is something alive and active. It can judge secret emotions and thoughts. So the Word of God, it divides between the soul and the spirit. It discerns our hearts. And when we yield to the Word of God, who actually is not an it, but a him, it's Jesus, as we yield our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, what happens is he discerns us in love and mercy and compassion. He accepts us where we are, but doesn't leave us where we are. He draws us into a greater communion with him, a greater realm of faith, step by step, minute by minute, hour by hour, imperceptibly, almost always imperceptibly, God grows us into his image. So if during this period of lockdown you've not felt like you've grown, or perhaps you even feel like you've gone backwards, let's not go by what we feel, but let us trust and continue to trust in God, trust in our Lord Jesus Christ, and trust those who have the rule over us, because God is at work in us. The church has never been closed. The church buildings have been. Now we're beginning to try to discern how do we reopen our church buildings for worship. Well, that's something that I don't have to concern myself with. That's something that the bishops, priests and deacons can, can, can sort out, although I'm very willing to assist and help in any way that I can that's appropriate. But we might feel as if you've lost ground in this period of lockdown. But be assured that the Lord has silently been working in our hearts. So listen and discern and know that the Lord, He is God and He knows the end from the beginning and He has a greater plan for our lives as we simply say, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. Well today I'm going to keep it short, it's going to be a five minute talk um, unusually, the last two weeks has been uh, 15 minutes, so I'm going to keep it short and sweet. And so God bless you and see you tomorrow.